Hi guys, it's James from Wex Photo Video and today we are here in London, Westminster to test out three wireless microphones. The Rode Wireless Go 2, the DJI mic as well as the Sennheiser EWDP. Work out what wireless microphone is right for your camera bag. So now we're out of the hustle and bustle of Westminster, we've come to St. James's Park. So I'm gonna explain what we're gonna be doing today so what you can get out of this video. So we've got three different types of microphones, one low budget, medium budget, and high budget, to work out what one is right for your camera bag. So in this review, we've got the Rode Wireless Go 2, we've got the DJI mic, and we've got the Sennheiser EWDP. Now, with these microphones, one is kind of a bit different to the others, I suppose. So you've got the Rode and the DJI are 2.4 gigahertz or Wi-Fi based. Now, that's great in some environments, but it, it has few limitations, where the Sennheiser EWDP is UHF or ultra high frequency, which is a bit different to the kind of standard Wi-Fi radio mics. So let me quickly talk you through the difference. Right, so let's quickly talk about 2.4 gigahertz or Wi-Fi based radio microphones. And that's just like the Rode we've got here, as well as the DJI. Now there's pros and cons to this 2.4 gigahertz. You'll also find they're a little more popular and also fairly inexpensive versus other microphones on the market. We sell an awful lot of Wex Photo video and actually me, I personally use them as well as uh, Luke, the filmmaker today. We are using it at the moment. We're using the Rode Wireless Go 2s for this video. But there are also a few negatives to it as well. So 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, as you imagine, Wi-Fi isn't always reliable. I'm sure you'll find that when you've used Wi-Fi in your house, depending on what room you're in, you might find the strength decreases or increases depending on how close you are to the transmitter. And that's exactly the same with this microphone. You'll find that if you're shooting through a wall or even shooting through a person, if you put the simple, the Wi-Fi, the microphone behind you, it's got to shoot through you. And there's a lot of water in your body, which may cause interference. And it's the same problem if you're in a really busy environment like London. Because 2.4 gigahertz is a free transmission system, everyone can use it. And the problem is if also a lot of people are around you, it may get cluttered up and it might get, end up having quite a few problems with transmitting and receiving a nice clean audio. Now, if you've ever had like a low frequency hum or buzz, that noise is the Wi-Fi frequency interference. And that's the problem with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi based microphones. So it has lots of benefits to it, I think. Um, if you're in a, you know, a fairly Wi-Fi free zone, let's say in the countryside, you probably won't run into any of these problems. But as soon as you go into a very busy urban area, like for instance, London, let's say you're filming outside of Starbucks and they've got free Wi-Fi, you're using the same Wi-Fi frequency as the Starbucks. So you may run into problems with um, your full length, so how far you can be from the actual transmitter. You also might run into problems when it comes to how many people are using the frequency. So do bear that in mind when you're buying 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal based microphones. And the other type of microphone we'll be using in this video is a UHF or ultra high frequency. And that's the Sennheiser we've got here. Now this has got many benefits, I think, over a traditional Wi-Fi or 2.4 gigahertz base. Think of it like a radio station. You can choose a specific frequency to use. It's also really helpful if you're in an urban environment like this, like we're shooting in London today, where everyone can be using that 2.4 gigahertz and it can get very cluttered very quickly, especially let's say you're, you're shooting outside a football stadium, for example, where this, you're gonna be able to cut through all of that noise because less people are gonna be using that specific frequency. You've even got blocked frequencies that let's say, a company can pay for, which I also think is really nice. Let's say you're a big budget production. Let's say you're, I don't know, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Then, for example, you can have a specific frequency just for you. So you've got 180,000 people in a stadium. Only you are actually going to be using that frequency. So you're going to get far less interference. The other big benefit is it can go through walls and cut through all of that noise a lot easier. So let's say you're a wedding photographer or an event photographer and you've got a lot of people. You can have this right behind your back and objects are less likely to cause kind of frequency problems. So it really depends on what you're using it for. If you're just a YouTuber and you're just filming in a field, then 2.4 gigahertz is probably gonna be okay. But if you're ever running into problems and you're ever having that buzzing and hissy noise, ultra high frequency microphones are gonna be far more reliable. 
Right, so that's enough of me talking about frequencies and interference and Wi-Fi. My head is spinning with all that information. So let's jump into the comparison piece. So in this video, I'm going to mic myself up with all three microphones simultaneously. So you can work out what microphone you prefer just through the audio quality, the Sennheiser, the Rode or the DJI. Right, so let's go find some really loud environments to test all three microphones. Now, when it comes to each one of the microphones we're testing today, each one has a different maximum range. So the Sennheiser, say they have a maximum range of 50 meters line of sight, where the Rhodes have a maximum range of 200 meters, and the DJI have got the furthest range of 250 meters. But there's definitely something you have to bear in mind with that. That's line of sight. So if there's any obstacle or obstruction in the way, like for instance, a person walking in front of you, or let's say you're in a forest and there's a tree, or you're a wedding photographer or event photographer and you're simply shooting through buildings, that is going to dramatically reduce the overall length. So as I walk further and further back, does the audio quality reduce or increase? To be honest with you, with them behind me, and they've got to actually shoot through me, there's a lot of water in my body. So because of that, you may actually get a little bit of interference simply because of my body. I'm in a completely blank field and there is no one here, but there's still maybe interference problems from the Wi-Fi from that building, or even for little things like the police car over in the distance. So this is a total of 50 meters. Can you hear me now? Can you, can you hear me now? Now, out of the three microphones, two of them actually have an inbuilt recorder. Both the Rode and the DJI will allow you to use them as a field recorder, which is really handy in case you go out of range, you'll still be able to get that audio, where the Sennheiser will be coming out with a bunch of accessories that will allow you to do that in August. But we'll talk about that in a bit. So yeah, just listen back to all three of the microphones. In an environment like this, centre London, lots of frequencies, all of them struggled at the maximum range of 50 metres. One thing we can take away from it is don't really listen to the maximum range. They aren't telling you the full truth. Again, in perfect conditions, they may be 250 meters, but in the real world environment, it is far shorter. Out of all three, I do think the Sennheiser was better, but write down in the comments below what you think. So I would say we've come to the busiest place in London, Piccadilly Circus, which used to be classed as the centre of London and the centre of the empire back in the 1940s and 50s. So this is going to be a really good place to test frequencies, because I'm sure there's loads of Wi-Fi, sound, how good is the audio? So we're going to do a test on the Sennheiser, we're going to do a test on the Rode, and we're going to do a test on the DJI to really test in the busiest environment we could think of. Now Piccadilly Circus is always famous for people singing. And there's someone singing behind me, so can you hear me? I can't hear myself, so I'll be really surprised if any of the microphones actually pick me up. But uh, let's go by the road and see how loud we can get. So we're right next to an incredibly busy road in Piccadilly Circus. How well is the audio faring up? It is really loud, so I wouldn't be surprised if the quality isn't great, but it really is to show you how amazing these microphones are. Right, so here is going to be a really good test. We've got a bus that's now directly in front of me, which has probably just blocked our line of sight, as well as we're in a really, really busy environment. Loads of frequencies from those massive signs up there. We've got some cars going by. They've probably got Wi-Fi in those. Frequency coming from all those buildings over there. So yeah, this is probably gonna be the most difficult audio test we could possibly think of on this channel. Now, just like a camera sensor, microphones has a thing called a dynamic range which is really the difference between the loudest point and the quietest point. Now, if a microphone has a very low dynamic range and you, you wanna hear your voice in a very loud environment, you're gonna to have to raise your voice to match the kind of gain of that microphone, to match the dynamic range. Where if a microphone has a larger dynamic range, you won't have to raise your voice as much and it will still pick up nice, clean audio. Now, out of all of the microphones that we've got today, Sennheiser has the highest dynamic range. So, you won't have to raise your voice as much when you're in a loud and a very chaotic environment, like, for instance, Piccadilly Circus. But with the other microphones, like, for instance, the Rode and also DJI, they've got a slightly less dynamic range than the Sennheiser. So, you might not be able to pick up the cleanest audio. But let us know what you think of each one of the microphones in that incredibly loud test we've just done in the comments below.
Right, so let's quickly talk about the overall battery life of each one of the microphones. So firstly, the DJI has a battery life of around 5.5 hours. The Rode has a battery life of around seven hours, where the Sennheiser has a battery life of 12 hours when it comes to the receiver, and then seven hours when it comes to the transmitter. Now what's really nice about the Sennheiser and what makes it different to the other microphones is it has a replaceable battery. So if you forget to charge the roads, let's say you were shooting and you just run out of battery, there's nothing you can do unless you charge it via USB type C, but you can just simply replace the battery and get a full length out of it. And also another nice thing, it takes double A's, which is also a really nice feature. The other thing I like about the DJI's is it also has a power pack. So you plug them in a bit like you would do with your Apple AirPods and it can charge via that as well, which gives you an additional 5.5 hours. But overall, I think the Sennheiser has got the win simply because it has the replaceable battery. It really depends on what type of creator you are, depending on what microphone I think fits best with your style of workflow. Let's say you're fairly new to video and you're not too sure on the, what settings you'll need. Both the DJI and the Rode basically plug in and play. They're basically like shooting in auto. You plug them in and they pretty much work. The only downside to that is there's not a lot of control. You can't really customize them to your own heart's desire, where the Sennheiser, on the other hand, gives you full control. Now, it's not like shooting in full manual. It's like the equivalent of shooting in like aperture priority mode. You get, it's like a, it's like a semi-manual where you can change some of the gain settings and a lot of the settings that will allow you to be a little bit more customizable. Like you could plug it into XLR, for example, where these two are just 3.5 mil. So it really depends on how you want to use the microphone, all depending on which one is best for you. If you're straight out the gate, DJI and Rode are probably going to be better fit. But if you're wanting to really start to push your audio skills, the Sennheiser would be a lot better for you. Now, another thing to bear in mind is both the DJI and Rode have internal memory, where currently the Sennheiser doesn't, although that will change with an accessory that is going to be released in August 2023. So the DJI has up to 15 hours of internal memory, where the Rode has up to seven hours of internal memory. Now, internal memory is really helpful in emergency situations. Let's say the frequency is just messing up, like for instance, in central London, and it's not recorded to the camera perfectly, you can actually use the internal recording of both of the devices, which is really handy, especially in emergency situations. So again, this is another really challenging environment for microphones inside inside a skate park in London. I've got to be careful, watch out. So this is what the DJI sounds like. One, two, three, four, five. This is what the Rode sounds like. One, two, three, four, five. And this is what the Sennheiser sounds like. One, two, three, four, five. Right, better move out of the way. Don't want to get hit by a skateboard. Right, so let's move on to the all important build quality and the design of each one of the microphones. Now the first thing you're gonna come out, especially when you open the box, is the difference in size between all three. Sennheiser is gigantic, especially when you verse it the DJI. The DJI is a tiny microphone. It's the same with the receiver as well. The receiver for the Sennheiser is definitely a lot larger than both the Rode and also the DJI. But apart from that, I actually think the Sennheiser really comes up when it comes to build quality. Again, German engineering just wins in all aspects. I think the Sennheiser is incredibly well made. It's got a lot more of a metallic design, same with the transmitter and receiver, where both the Rode and also the DJI have got a lot more of a plasticky feel to it, which is definitely good for the like, lightweight design. But over time, I can't imagine it lasting as well as the Sennheiser one. Now, another thing to bear in mind is the size of the clip. So the clip on both the DJI and also the Rode is quite small, where the clip on the Sennheiser is a lot larger. Now, just throughout today, I've had all three microphones on my belt, and the only one I haven't had to readjust is the Sennheiser. Both the Rode and the DJI keep falling off because of the size of the clip, where the Sennheiser one really did stay solid. So yeah, if you're after one to last you all day and not having to fiddle around with it constantly, the Sennheiser has got a lot better build quality, and to be honest, the design is a lot better. 
Another thing to bear in mind, and it's just the overall attention to detail with Sennheiser, is it's got a screwable 3.5 mil. So you plug it in, you screw it, and it's locked in. Sometimes the lavalier can just come slightly undone and you can sometimes lose audio altogether. And it's just because the, basically the lavalier is just slightly come unclicked, which is really annoying. So having a screwable 3.5 mil is a really handy feature. And again, I just think the overall attention to detail of the Sennheiser is just second to none. Now what I really like about the overall the Sennheiser microphone that we're using today is its compatibility but also its customization and it really grows with you as a filmmaker and you can change the accessories depending on what your specific use type is. So let's say you've gone from just classic filmmaking and all of a sudden you want to do weddings or events but you don't want to go out and buy a whole additional microphone for that. By the Sennheiser microphone, you can adapt it to your specific workflow. So for instance, let's say you're getting into Vox Pops and you want a, a kind of Vox Pop microphone, you can choose this and then you can change the head being more directional or less directional. It's fully customizable depending on your use type. Other things like for instance, let's say you've got a camera, you've just recently bought a camera cage, but there's no way of attaching your current microphone. You get a camera cage accessory which is fully magnetic, which can attach your transmitter or receiver directly to the bottom. So magnetic like so, which I think is just a really nice feature. And other microphones just don't have that. And that's what I really think makes the Sennheiser stand out for me. Now, I think the biggest thing for me is how it works with XLR. Now, XLR, if you, if you don't know, is a more reliable way and it's a, it's a more professional way of recording audio. You've got 3.5 mil, which is what we're predominantly using today. You get XLR as a slightly larger cable. You might have seen it on more professional shoots. Now, what's nice about the Sennheiser mic is it is compatible. And not only that, they are bringing out new accessories that will allow you to actually use it in a professional workflow. So they're bringing out a new plug-in transmitter that will work with shotgun microphones, and it will remove the option of having XLR cables all over the place. So what that allows you to do is use more professional microphones that offer better audio quality while using the Sennheiser mic. You don't have to buy out a whole range of new XLR recorders. You can do it with the kit that you already own. And it's little things like the attention to detail that Sennheiser offer with their microphone system. Take the battery, for example. This battery works with basically all of their accessories. It fits in the transmitter, it fits in the receiver, it fits in additional microphones, it's exactly the same battery. Also, it's backwards compatible with AA batteries. So let's say you bring a bunch of these on set and you run out because you use them all the time, but you've got a bunch of AAs lying around, use AA batteries. And it's other things about battery life, right? For instance, the screen, it tells you how exactly how long you've got left to record. You haven't got a guess thinking like, you've got half an hour left, it'll tell you you've got exactly 38 minutes before the battery dies, which is just a really handy feature, especially if you're working in a professional environment. Right, so after using all three microphones throughout the day, let's summarize this video and work out what microphone is right for your camera bag. And let's firstly talk about the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now, I really like the Rode. I think it's a great wireless microphone. It has really handy features, especially if you're starting out with video. I think this is a great microphone for your very first kind of wireless microphone system. I love how you've got two transmitters, so you can record two people at the same time or just simply use it as a backup audio. I also love how it's got internal recording as well. Again, it's just nice to have a backup. The only thing I don't really like is the build quality. It's not great. It's good, but it's not amazing. The clip has broken on me for a couple of times, like the small little springs. And also, I would say, you know, the charging case isn't great. But overall, I think it's a great starter microphone. Now the DJI microphone I also think is a great starter microphone or a microphone you want to progress from the road as it offers, it's a little bit more expensive but it does offer a few more features. Like for instance, that magnet on the back, I think it's really handy in certain situations as well as that charging case. How just having a place to plug them afterwards, I think is really nice and it's something I really think is missing from the road. It's also a little bit smaller, so if size and weight is an issue, having just simply a smaller microphone is definitely going to be beneficial. Again, I don't think the battery life is amazing, and I also don't think the build quality is great, but for what you get, such a small microphone, I think is great if you're maybe even a travel filmmaker. I also think the Sennheiser is a great addition, especially if you really want to upgrade your audio quality. It's a totally different microphone experience. You're getting 
Firstly, it's slightly larger, but you're getting way better build quality. So if you want something that lasts you a long time, you know, the Rode and the DJI, they're okay build quality, but compared to the Sennheiser, especially Apple for Apple's comparison, you really can tell the difference. And small little features, like for instance, it's XLR compatible, which if you've ever used XLR microphones, you know how much better they are. Having a wireless microphone that's just simply compatible with it is just excellent. And having a little screw thread on the top for the lavalier, again, it's just the attention to detail of the Sennheiser is just so much better than both the Rode and also the DJI. But of course, that does come at a cost. Brilliant, and there we go, guys. So there is our review and comparison of the Sennheiser, Rode, and DJI microphones. And of course, if you have any other questions, make sure to write it down in the comments below. I've been James for Wex Photo Video, and I'll catch you guys next time.